we'll see what I'm doing. Yep. Some bits of this side definitely thicker than others. What shape we got to go with? Uh, we straighten up that edge a bit doing that, so we don't want that. Can we curve it again? Can we curve it and keep the circle? No idea how long I've been doing this. No idea what the time is. Can't even remember what time I started. So I'm using the curved edge of this tool, I'm holding it at an angle to get a tighter radius here. I'm just working that okay, curve. I will be I will be using the shaving shaving tools. Sort of a bit like woodworking tools but made for clay use to take off clay and get a nice curve all the way around. But do that now let's get that on the wheel so just going to pause we're going to bring the potter's wheel up and we're going to use that as a like a lathe right here we go again so i've transferred the pot onto the wheel and let's just can we get a better view of that again the light's not ideal it's a bit too much shadow there isn't it but if we spin it round and round and round and here we can use these tools like this to take off some of this clay and it's a bit quicker because you're not having to spin it around by hand. Uh, I tend not to use the wheel for throwing, I tend to use it mainly for jobs like this. So hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm doing here. Let's see if we can just well, we've got a bit of a bobble haven't we but let's see if we can why is it when we got such a bubble? Where is it coming from? Which bit's the... It's there, isn't it? Let's see if we can... Fine tune that bubble out. If I find it over here. That's where the light is. You should be able to see how it's going. So take a little bit of clay off. Not too much. I'm pretty sure I've got this in the middle of the wheel, but because the part's uneven, that's why it looks like it's wobbling about all over the place. But hopefully I'll find as I use this tool on the outside, we'll take out some of the high points, some of the high points, and it will get more circular. So I'm not pressing too hard. I don't want to take the curve out. I just want to take out the high points you unevenness and I want to put some curve in because I'll, oh, this is kind of wobbling about like this is actually in the middle I'm looking into the bottom of the pot and the, the, the bottom seems plumb centre um, yeah so let's, uh, let's get rid of some of these ridges so we're taking off not too much, can you see that? Not too much clay. <laughs> so 
so if it's not symmetrical if it's a pleasing shape you know it feels nice and round when you handle it or when you look at it and, or it looks nice and round when you look at it that's really what we're looking for isn't it We don't know what colour this is going to be yet, and when we do put colour on it, we don't know what effect the firing is going to have on the glaze. So there's lots more surprises in store for this pot yet. a bit more off this shoulder because let's check how thick we've got quite a bit of thickness to go out there so I can take a bit more off this shoulder and, and get some more roundness probably not actually going to be able to get it as round as I wanted but I can feel I mentioned when I put this on here it almost felt square at the top. And you can see the tool bobbling up and down. It's not feeling as square as it did so just by doing this. It's just a slight pressure from my finger. Just making it a bit rounder. So the, the moisture is trapped in. Keep bringing this tool up, angling it round and round, taking off just little margins of clay. Don't want it digging in. Don't want to gouge a great hole. Let's have a look. See if we can Show us the camera without. Oh, how are we going? Round ish. Yep. Now, I'm going to do a bit inside. I want it to go the other way. So, let's reverse the direction. Let's see if we can get the CD in. We better turn off some of these uh, ridges, some imperfections in the bottom. A little bit dry in the bottom now. Can we take anything off? If it's not that touching the sides, just a little bit. Just a little bit. Not too much in one go. Smoothing and polishing. down to the bottom because I don't want it I don't want the tool vibrating on the ridges I want the ridge I want the tool to take the ridges out. It 
shaking all over the place. So we'll come and put more ridges in. Yeah, that's scraping, that's because we clay's uh, clay's getting drier. Certainly not symmetrical. I do like this bit now. I do love to see the way the high points come off of the, uh, the shaping tool. Points about halfway up this part where this, the side is straight, and there's a point about here where it goes, although it's going at an angle, it's sort of straight. And I want it all to curve. I want it all to curve. So let's see if we can work it out. Now that is actually getting quite thin. I'm quite pleased with that. That is all right. We're taking some weight out as well, which is good. So let's uh, have a little go with this one now. This round okay, little lens there somewhere. Where's the light? Light lens and light. Show you what I'm doing. That one. This round one here, I'm going to have a little scoot around the inside with that. Let me change direction. No. Just a little scoot. Now, this is quite gougy if I'm not uh, don't damage. This is quite gougy if I'm not careful. And it will leave lumps on the inside if I don't keep taking them off like that. But it's quite a good way of. Juddery, don't judder. Quite a good way of taking out ridges, it's quite good. There's a big sort of ridge in there somehow. <laughs> so we're going to dry a bit in there. How can I do that? I've only got two plug sockets. One's got a wheel going round and round, and the other's got the camera plugged in. So I think what we'll have to do is stop the wheel. Plug in. Well, the 
careful plugging the doodah. Can't make the wheel go around, but make the blow go around. We can take a bit of moisture out that bottom. The other thing about this is, when I do eventually turn it over, I don't want this top to deform, but I also don't want the bottom to sink in. Um, there's every chance of that happening. So if it's soft as I'm working on it, I'll start off with a, a round shape in the bottom, and then as I turn it over, the weight of the clay that's working on it will bring that down and I'll end up with a flat bottom. I like it to stand level, but I want it to rock, spin, wobble. How are we doing? I'll put a tool in there. If I put the CD in there, CD in there and I get a scraping noise, I'll know it's beginning to dry out. So let's see. make a scraping noise and <laughs> but we need to make it go around plug it back in which way do we want it to go we want it to go around we want it to go that way I think we do want it to go that way Let's see if we get a scraping ah don't the edge we get a scraping noise a little bit scrapey Oh yeah, very scrappy. That will do. How much are you taking off? Taking off just a tiny bit. And I can see that clay that's coming off that's drier. Feels warmer as well. Feels drier than it did before. In it because the wheels try to go slow. Biffing it. Good, good, good. Getting clay off quite evenly. Warm, dryish clay. This is why I call overworking now because I was happy with that. Where there's a little bit of little flake of dry clay in there, and I want to get that out. And this is where when you find you're getting tired and you think, "Well, oh, just finish this, just finish this bit off before I pack it up," and then you mess up the whole thing. And what was, you know, a nice relaxed afternoon of making pots ends up being a bit of a frustration. So that's got a bit of a line on the inside. Um, I'm going to tip it up to show that, but I've got a bit of a line, a bit of a gouge in there. <laughs> do I work that out or do I leave it? Do I leave that as a feature? And it takes a nice bit of colour. take it out here we go risky 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 concentrate 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 just letting this long coil of clay go into the bottom and remove that the CD in a bit don't start jittering just let me take out that again Stick to the CD. 
big lumps of clay that we've peeled out. So we've got rid of the gouge, but now what we've got is shavings and clay. So we go in and we're overworking because unscheduled Fettling number two. Right. What we're we looking like on the outside. Should have a should have a look up here. Got a, we've got a nice pattern on the outside, I don't know if you can see this, where the tool has judded, it's put that texture on the outside, but I'm okay with that. I'm actually okay with that. That is quite interesting. So, We've got to finish this top off, haven't we? Got to finish this top off. We're going to do that with a chamois now. Sammy the chamois. A little tidy up. All these shards of clay in the bucket. Get the chamois. A little bit of chamois leather. This uh, this was once part of a big piece of chamois. Just cut that off. Stick it in the bucket. Give it a squeeze. Want it wet, but not too wet. I don't want my hands to be dry while I'm using it. And what we're going to do is just let. Did you actually need to zoom in a bit? Which way we go? Just need to let the smooth, wet leather <laughs> go the other way even out this edge basically just washing off as people do with the other tiny now um so yeah we're gonna smooth smooth this very very carefully Take out these little ridges. See, so not much coming off. We don't want, really want that. We want to compress it and just little lumps. It's a little lump. I'm just going to use my thumbnail just to try and take off that high point. Now the clay's got a bit softer on the top because of the wetness. That's a very high point. Where is it? Is it there? Right, let's get the finger. One finger in, one finger out. Just go round and round and round. To polish this edge smooth. Some root lumps and bumps on the inside. Come off on my thumb that much. I 
this chamois leather technique this is something I learned off uh, Simon Leach watching his YouTube videos so uh, watching him throw his pots and just finishing off the top with the chamois now when he's um, when he's thrown his pots his top edge was a lot more even than mine was to begin with so didn't quite, quite need as much finishing as this did but I can let this go round and round as long as I want really and I still might find that when it's dried these little gaps little unevennesses some one bit will be thicker than another one edge will be wider than the other one will be a bit more curved than the other let's have a look and see if I can show you Okay, when you just touch it with your thumb and your finger, you know, that's alright. It's just when it's going round and round, you feel the ridges. But when you, if you were holding the finished pot in your hands, you would be spinning it round and round at umpteen revolutions per, per minute. Let's do a bit more. Another few spins. Just bring my inside finger over a bit just to get get a bit of a, a roundness to the top. I don't want a sharp, sharp edge. So you've got a high point still. Look here. It will not really. It's a really high point. It's a. There's a kind of an undulation going around. It's a bit. It needs a bit of work on the inside there. I think. How can we do that? How can we smooth that up without messing the whole thing up? Can I fit in the tip of the wooden doodle? Nope. I don't want to do that. This is a, a rubber rib or rubber kidney, probably actually plastic rather rubber, but it's flexible and it's soft. But it's got a nice edge that will just allow me to take off. Oh yes, that's come off very nice. Just tidy that inside a little bit. And these are very nice sort of polishing up your pot before it's completely dry you can uh, you, you can get a nice sort of burnished finish Right, and we're going to do the same sort of thing on the outside now. So this is not actually round on the top. There is a, can you see that there? There's a bit of a doodah there. And uh, can, we, can we treat that a bit better? Maybe if we just go round and round for a minute or two. It's not a race if you want to take 10 minutes doing this, take 10 minutes, if you want to take an hour doing it, take an hour.
just using the nice smooth edge of this rubber made in Taiwan just a little tool just to smooth the clay and I can feel the undulations the lack of symmetry we just let it ride over the surface I'm not trying to change the shape now we're just trying to smooth out any last little ridges and even though I've done all this by the time I switch it over I tip it over and I'm working on the bottom I might find that I'm undoing some of the work they've done here so a little bit more on the top maybe it will be a bit of a sharp edge looking quite fine that actually they're not perfectly circular they're pretty good Ooh, what's going on there we'll just work at eye level for a minute or two And I'm actually just bending this tool with my fingers a little bit, making a curve a little bit like with the wooden one, so that I can make it follow the contours of the part. It's really smooth in the clay. It's almost got a shine on it now. And you've got to be a little bit careful that clay doesn't build up on the edge because that'll like the leave lumps on your clay or put ridges into it so it's like one step two steps forward one step back right let's have a look at that in the camera how's that edge looking so there's a little bit on there but i'm going to leave that because I, I can finish that off even if the clay is dry i can probably just finish that off if i just have to spray it with the uh, the water bottle just put a bit of moisture in I've got the inside is pretty good there's some little bit of texture in there a little bit of grooves but I'm all right with that because that's going to take my um, take my glaze and I'll probably just be able to have another look and work at that before it's completely dry so what I want to do now is dry this top so how it's doing, it's not leather hard, it's not, put a bit of <laughs> dry hands on one. Uh, clean hands, I mean, clean your hands, clean your hands, clean your hands. Um, I want to dry off this top part so I can turn it over. But I don't want it to be, yeah, right, okay. So let's, uh, so we've got enough juice in the camera. Now I've put it on charge for a bit. We can plug this in. I'm going to spin it round. Give it a dry. Just make it nice and to the light, which is not one anyway. In the case I want to get this all done in one session if I can I would really just walk away and leave this an hour leave this yeah just come back to it leave it now leave it two hours just to dry a bit in the air and then maybe start something else um, but uh, I want to see if I can get it all done continuously right there's not enough use of the battery so what we're going to do is plug the camera back in and spin it around <laughs> um, spin it around by hand there you go
You also see the clay's a little bit lighter than it was before. Not got as much water in it, so it's not as dark. Um, the one I made last time, the one I made last time is even lighter, so you can see that. Can you see how light that is compared with? That wet clay didn't get quite as round as I wanted on the bottom. It's slightly smaller than what I did before. Now that's dry. I got that quite round on the bottom. But not very good shape. Not very really round. That's more round. It's a bit thick, you know. Let's see how they get when they're fired. Right, back to this one. Let's get it dry. Put it on the inside. If I try and put a bit of pressure on there now, it's not bending. At least I don't think it is. So we could be leather hard there, but we're just going to take a bit more moisture out. that for a second or two um, just let that heat go out see if it takes some moisture with it and uh, I'm gonna go make myself a cup of tea I'll see you back in about five minutes